Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of season 5 here at Sunderland. We start with a game against Manchester City away from home. They are 2 points above us and 3 places above us in the table. They're having a good season, City, as you would expect them to. Better than they've started in a number of other seasons, that's for sure. Only the one defeat, although they've been drawing a lot of games, but only a point off top. Top spot is shared by three teams at the minute, although Manchester United and Arsenal both have a game in hand on Chelsea. We're having a really, really good season, although we had a, a slight slip up in the last episode with a defeat to Bristol City, who have now actually managed to draw themselves away from the relegation zone, mainly because of that three points they got against us. We have a very busy month of December. As such, we're going to split it into two. We're going to play City, Brighton and Watford, and then sim the home game against Burnley at the end of the episode. And then tomorrow, we'll play Palace, Arsenal and Bournemouth and then head into the January transfer window. So hopefully we can continue on with our relatively decent form this season. At the beginning of the year, I was hopeful of a top half finish. I'd still be happy with a top half finish, but the way that we've started, I might want to push for Europe. We'll wait and see how things go. We could even perhaps try and do that via an FA Cup win as well, if the draws go our way and we're able to get victories in games. Most important thing for me this year, is getting ourselves above Newcastle. That's step number one. Finish above the rivals. Right, we'll start with City away and then take it from there. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any more. Let's jump in. City start with Edison in goal, as you would expect. Atal at right back with Manolas, Longley and Bernat as a back four. Completely different to the, how they start the save. De Silva, De Silva, De Bruyne, Silva and Garcia in the middle with Pepe on the right, Jesus and Sané. They've got Phil Foden on the bench. They've got other players that can make an impact on the bench as well. Defensive options like Daily Blint has come across from uh, Ajax, also obviously formerly playing for Manchester United. But the City team are the best scorers in the league and we have the best defence in the league. So it's kind of unstoppable force versus a movable object. We'll see which one comes out on top. That's a lovely touch by Murphy. I'll drill this looking for Harrison. I was contemplating uh, dropping Harrison briefly to bring Che Adams into the starting lineup. I mentioned that in the last episode. I haven't for this one, just because City are such a strong side. But for the next game against Brighton, I think I might give Che Adams the start, considering as well that it was Brighton that he scored his goal against uh, Che Adams on his debut in the Cup. So we'll see if he can replicate that form in the uh, game against them in the league. Oh, Longley with the overhead kick. Cannoned off Jack Clark. They'll go out for another corner. They're going to take this one short. Bernardo Silva is oh, dribbling his next level in real life. And it's just as good in FIFA as well. Atal back to Bernardo. To Atal again. Taking their time here, City. But they have worked it well. And Bernardo Silva into the middle. Win that header. Declan Rice does. Another City corner. Pressure indeed from the Sky Blues. Troyer won't play this one short. That's whipped into the middle. Ah, Nick Pope comes to claim. Right, let's just keep hold of it for a little while. Make sure that we can get out of our own half. Driving down the line. Nice tackle by Tamori. Jesus flicks that into Nicola Pepe. And here's Alex Garcia. De Bru oh, Kevin, calm down, mate. It would have been amazing if he'd pulled it off. But it was nowhere near. Maybe wait until you're two or three goals up before you start trying stuff like that. A little bit showboaty in the opening stages. Try and play through Jack Clark, but Manolas is perfectly placed. City have done this throughout the game so far with their possession, but thankfully for me, Nicola Pepe's touch lets him down there. Look at that round the corner to Harrison. Last time he tried to play Jack Clark and it didn't work. This time it might. I see the man at the back post. If mind, we'll try again. Oh, Manolas again getting the better. Of my offensive movements. He's been a rock for them at the back in the opening half an hour or so here, Costas Manolas. He's moved in real life, I think, to Napoli, Manolas, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yearwood in here to Jack Clark. Turn, bend it. Oh, straight to Edison. Ricardo. Certainly Roy Sané. Slight deflection. Justin. Oh, it's not good. Not clearing it well enough. 
Oh, Declan Rice gets in well, but it might still fall. Vital from Jack Clark. Just had to give everything to get to that space for Ed Murphy on the left. Sorry, on the right to maybe turn in on his left. But she's done well. He's looking for a teammate. He might still drop to him. Ed Murphy off the post. Oh, can you get more unlucky? We got really fortunate with the way it fell back to him. And then that luck flipped and he's hit the outside the post and we aren't going to go in at half time with a 1-0 lead. Bernardo Silva, don't let it get him on his left. Oh, oh Jesus, what a ball to Kevin De Bruyne. What a save from Nick Pope. Bernardo Silva going off now and Manu Garcia coming on in his place. Pepe could deliver on his left and does. And there's Manu Garcia talking about having an instant impact. It could have been the best instant impact if that had gone in. Fortunately for his teammates and his manager and the fans in the stands it didn't go in and we're still at nil nil battling hard in this game both sides have had chances to go in front this is a good foot race jack clark is the one that wins it and he's turned well he's gotten past the towel drills it wide Nicolai pepe he's got support with him he's going to drive around the outside here and then lays it back to tomo mernier into the middle away by one fourth Staying solid defensively. You can tell that we've got the best defensive record because we have been really, really good at keeping City out. You can tell they've got one of the best, as it happens, Hello. the best offensive records because they've done nothing but attack the entire game. Drew Yearwood around the corner. Moise Ken loses out. George Harrison wins it back, though. Yearwood, Ken, I could shoot early. I could look for a teammate. Oh, Declan Rice. Oh, I should have played the extra pass. As soon as I realised it was Rice, I regretted turning and pressing the shoot button. Ball over the top, they're looking for Sani is poor. And with 13 minutes to go in the battle of the unstoppable force against the immovable object, it looks as if it's going to be the immovable object that comes out not necessarily on top, but looking the better. Because we haven't conceded. Alex Garcia. Foden kicks it against Rice. It drops back to Foden and Foyth will hack clear. I feel like I've done almost nothing but defend in this game. I get forward rarely, but the majority of my play has been chasing shadows on this field. Phil Foden looking to burst past, but it's a terrible ball into the box. And Nick Pope will bowl that clear. Ed Murphy has Moise Ken in front of him. And he's slotted the ball really nicely through there to George Harrison. Yeah, one last attack. You're right, Martin Tyler. Ed Murphy. Jack Clark. Jack Clark. Oh! It couldn't have come much closer. Really couldn't have come much closer. Oh, he's bending back towards goal as well, but it, in the end, was a few inches wide. It's going to be a point apiece at the Etihad. Disappointed not to have been able to get victory, but at the same time, delighted to have kept a clean sheet. A draw against City doesn't really do much for either of us in the league, but it'll take City level on points with Chelsea at least. And it might move us slightly higher if other results go our way elsewhere. We've Brighton next, who've just lost to Burnley, who we have at the end of today's episode. So we'll see if we can get a win against Brighton. And I will now give Che Adams a start ahead of George Harrison. They've both Harrison and Moise Ken have had five goal contributions apiece. Ken has got four goals, one assist. Harrison has one goal, four assists. So as a partnership, they're working well enough. But I would like to see if I can get goals from both strikers. So I'll see if Che Adams can have the impact on the first team. And uh, we'll give him till the end of the episode. And hopefully he might just liven up our goal scoring um, abilities. Because we haven't been scoring that many goals this season. I'll have a quick look at the table actually just to, just to re reaffirm that. I think last time I checked we had like 11 goals in 14 games or something. like, Or 14 goals in 11 games or something similar. Let's have a look. 15 goals in 15 games. That's not anywhere near good enough, is it? Look at the amount of goals scored by everyone around us. Even those below us. It's not good enough, 15 goals. We need to start putting the ball in the back of the net on a more regular basis. If we're to take that step up and reach the next level of the Premier League. The Europa League spot, most importantly. Right, Brighton next. Here's the 11 for the Seagulls. Then Matthew Ryan in goal. At the back, they've got Ander Kappa, Semedo, Schindler and Sakai. In the midfield, Bissouma, Diawara and Piscina. And then up top, Jahan Baks, Marko Arnautovic and Brun Larsson. If you remember in the league game, or sorry, the League Cup game, 
we uh, played our rotation side and they played a weakened side as well and it was a 1-1 draw and Chad has got the goal as I mentioned in the game against City so I'm hoping that with our first team versus their first team we will actually edge it on quality this time around Declan Rice not going to shoot with him from the edge of the box the conditions don't necessarily uh, allow for amazing football oh it's going to fall to oh Declan Rice actually had a shot on target I can't believe it Jack Clark will deliver the ball into the middle and we'll look for Moyes again. It's Basuma that heads away. Yeah, the conditions aren't going to lend themselves to amazing football. We've just got to try and make the best of what we can. Declan Rice looking through the gap but cleared away by Semedo this time. We nod that back inside. Justin went for a fancy touch. As it happens, his second touch was woeful and Brighton have a throw. Brilliant. Corner for Brighton. Jahan backs to take it in the 20th minute. It's whipped in towards the near post. Brun Larson brings it down. Ian Altovic draws the save out. Nick Pope and Brighton can have it back on the corner. <sighs> Point again. Jahan backs delivers again. For the second time, it's not going to beat the first man. Rather frustratingly, with their green tops and white shorts, um, Brighton are actually blending into the pitch quite horribly here at the moment. And it's quite difficult to try and pick them out in this in these snowy conditions. Brun Larson with the header there, but that's over the bar. No way to be troubling the goalkeeper. 23 minutes played, we're still at nil-nil. And again, it feels like another very even game to this point. We'll do well to come away with this with a victory, but I would like to, obvious, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Here's Arnautovic. Lays that back there to Piscina. That was nice. Here's Diawara out to Jahan Backs. A bit ambitious from there like that, but fair play for giving it a go. Moises Ken heads that on nicely, and Che Adams brings it down just as well. And Ed Murphy's on his way. Is he going to get to that? No, he falls over, but Che Adams has won it back again. And we'll find Ed Murphy. And oh, he looked for Moises Ken, but it's cut out. I can't find a way through this Brighton back line just yet. Going to keep plugging away at it, though. The chance will come. Played over the top. Goal one by Justin. Lands on the floor in a heap, but thankfully didn't pick up a knock from it. Adams. We'll look for Ed Murphy again, and he has gotten in behind here, Ed. It's a good run. He's taken that in his stride relatively well enough. And we'll look for Moise again. Oh, you've got to score that. You have got to score that, Moise. That is not good enough. At least get it on target. I don't think I aimed it that poorly. If I did, then I apologise to Moise again. But no, as you can see from the arrow there, I didn't aim it where it ended up going. I was aiming into that bottom corner. And he's put it there. Cheers, pal. Pass. Oh, please. Oh, Jack Clark's on side. This has to be 1-0, surely. Semedo's closing me down. I'll get it on his right. Jack Clark. Saved by Matthew Ryan. I did not place that well enough. Oh, it's a free kick to the goalkeeper. I was waiting to see what was happening there because I wasn't sure. Well, I can't believe I haven't tucked that away. Really should have put that in the back of the net. We should be 1-0 up here. That's my mistake this time. Moise Ken ruined his chance for me, but I've let Jack Clark down there. He's not had as good a season thus far as he did last year, but regardless on that occasion, it's not him that was the issue. It was my inability to have the right opportunity. Che Adams, though, finds Moise Ken. Again, Matthew Ryan makes the save. He's having a good game in goal for them. You can chase after that as much as you like, mate. You're not getting anywhere near it. Corners come in for me. They've made a change. There's the delivery. Oh, Che Adams. Either he likes scoring against Brighton or he's just a really good goal scorer. That was expertly tucked away. Just swept home first time as it dropped to him. Really want to see a replay of that. That was excellent. Oh, I hate this camera angle at the stadium of light. But technique there, you could just see it through the haze of the back of the stand. Hopefully we get a second angle. There we do. And now to it's in the back of him. But that is a wonderful goal from Che Adams. 1-0 Sunderland. And in some style. Throw for Brighton and a cap back to Jahan Bax. Lofted in first time and away by James Justin. Moise Ken. Oh, nice touch and turn but can't hold off Sakai. Jahan Bax, Bissouma, Thiago Aspas. He was the one that scored their goal, their equaliser in the cup game, Thiago Aspas. Came off the bench to do it in that game. He's come off the bench here and not able to do it yet. 
Although there are still 20 odd minutes then to be able to find the goal to make the impact. It was a beautiful cross, wasn't it? And a cheeky little finish from Yago Aspas in that cup game. I'll lay this back here on Declan Rice. I'm not shooting with Declan Rice. I've learnt my lesson. Lovely ball through to Ed Murphy off the underside. The bar. Can't believe we haven't scored. Declan Rice with his head this time. Oh my God. How has that not gone in? We should be 2 0 up. We should be 2 0 up. Desperately unlucky, Fred Murphy. I wasn't sure if he was onside or not. So I just shot, put quite a bit of power behind it. And evidently, slightly too much. Foyth heads away. Oh, beautiful from Ed Murphy there. He's had a good season on the right-hand side, the youngster. He's up to 80 rated now as well. Jack Clark inside there to Che Adams. Will play the one-two. Look for Che again, but not find him. Drew Ewards in space. There's Moise Ken. And Che. And Jack Clark forced slightly wide, though, by the pass. People around me, it's Moise Ken. It's blocked by Schindler. It'll be a corner. <sighs> Come on. Come on. Jack Clark with the delivery underneath it. Jack Handbacks. Max Low. In there to Che Adams. It's a nice turn. Well, they're going to they're leave him space and not close him down. I'll try and shoot. Unfortunately, kicked it straight at Sakai. Making some changes here at the end of the game just to ensure we keep hold of the lead we've got. Jack Handbacks will force another corner here for us. A second now would obviously kill the game. With just a few minutes remaining. Who's going to win that? Ruben Semedo does. Chasing after it there. Jamal Lowe, who's off the bench here. I've got space in the middle. It's Jamie Ward. Don't know what his long shots are like. Tay Adams. Well, it was a good finish for his goal. But that one was a little bit... Oh, it took an effect. All right. No, I won't criticise him. It's not his fault. Jamie Ward with a header. Straight at Matthew Ryan. Literally anywhere else. And that's 2-0 and game over. With three minutes added on, there might be time for Brighton, but they don't look like they're putting much urgency into it. Max Lowe wins that header, and that'll be game. Thank you very much. Cheers, ref. We'll take that. Che Adams. Now will be the, the tester. Is he a very good goal scorer, or does he only like to score against Brighton? We'll give him the start in the next game as well, and uh, we'll get the answer to that question. Watford's 11, Pettersson in goal. Don't know where they are in the league, actually, Watford. I didn't check. Valkyr at right back, Kim Min, Jay Nelson, and Biragi at left back. Player we've used in FIFA 17, Road to Glory with Cambridge, I think. Uh, Will Hughes on the right, Zaracho, Cyprian, Pereira, Josip Dermic up top, who's a Norwich player, I think, in real life. And Fernandez, I think, was the other guy alongside him at the front. It's a. A deeper 4-4-2 than us. They're playing a, a 4-4-2 with two CDMs, whereas we're playing a 4-4-2 with two outright centre mids. We'll see which one is the most effective formation over the course of the next 90 in-game minutes. Will Hughes slots that through to Dermot. Is it back to four here? Yeah, right back pushing forward as the right mid. Will Hughes dips into a more central position. That's a dangerous cross. Justin heads away nicely. Hughes collects possession again, though. Now Zaracho with some space. Declan Rice steps in. That's what we bought him to do. Ciprien into Carlos Fernandez. We'll try and close him down with Declan Rice again here in the middle if I can. Looking to thread the eye of the needle there. It didn't work for them. Oh. Pinball in the Sunderland box. Will Hughes to take the corner on the far side for Watford. Decent enough delivery. Decent enough clearance by Drew Yearwood. Carlos Fernandez. Oh, strike. <laughs> well, Hughes let fly there, but it's an easy enough save for Nick Pope. Just had to get something on it. It was pretty much straight at him. Just had to be sure that the shot power didn't take it right past him. Adams nicely into Moise Ken. Ah, I asked for the ball outside the defender. He tried to slot it through the middle. That was a really poor pass, though. There, and Jack Clark. Not really much space to do anything at the moment. That's a nice ball into Drew Ewood, though. And Che Adams hit that early. He too has put it straight at the keeper. Ten minutes to go till half time. Nil, nil to this point. Let's get a goal before half time. Let's stop yourself. Just lost position now. I was glancing to the clock to see how long was left in the half. I got my pocket picked. Hughes back to Falkir. Forward to Hughes again. Looking about well. They're going to need to get it in the middle, which they have, and Pereira will not score. Nick Pope keeps it out, and as we go to kick it, that'll be half time. Ken to Drew Yearwood. Cross it nicely to Jay Adams. Hold the ball up well. Jack Clark into the middle. At the back post. Oh, Drew Yearwood missed it. I swear Baraki was behind him. He's either missed it or it was just too high for him to get on the end of. Either way, frustrating not to start the half with a goal there. 
Malcolm Hughes clears Ned Murphy will have to go and get that. Oh, that was not the first touch I was imagining. Into Tamori. Drew Yewood is there in some space. Finds Jack Clark, turns well. Moise Ken gets that down well and turns well and fires into the top corner. Good finish. Very good finish. We have started the second half with a goal. Moise Ken gives us the lead down at Vicarage Road. We are not scoring many goals this season as we've covered. But we also aren't conceding many, which means we're still getting results. Every game we've played so far this season has been particularly hard fought and very close. Almost every game that hasn't been a draw has been won or lost by a single goal margin. 1-0 <sighs> at Vicarage Road and still plenty of time for Watford to get back in it. Or maybe us to score a second goal. Imagine that. Two goals from us in one game. That hasn't happened since we lost to Bristol City. Here's Pereira out wide. Really good cross and header and goal from Watford. They weren't behind for long. Pereira played into the channel. Looked like he didn't have anywhere to go. But he's got the support and that cross is outrageous. And he's just got the, the better positioning on Max Lowe there, Will Hughes. And it's a really good header into the top corner. Watford level. We have now conceded another goal. Sinclair. He's quick. He's gotten away from me quite easily there. And Carlos Fernandes is in behind here. Low trying to close him down, but can't. Let's not concede two in ten minutes, shall we, lads? He says. Oh, no, the, the attacker. You could just tell. As soon as the attacker got around the front of the defender, I knew it was happening. James Justin tends to win a lot of headers like that at the back post. But, unfortunately, on this occasion, Pereira's just got the better of him. And it's another good header from Watford. And it is two goals in ten minutes, and they have turned it completely around. Ah, oh, balls. <laughs> Pereira into the middle, headed away by Declan Rice. Adams lift it over the top. Couldn't get in behind. I don't think Moise Ken would have reached it anyway. Had the ball found its target or been able to beat the man in front of him at least. It's Kim Min Jae. Forward to Zaracho. Oh, I have to be careful with Che Adams. He's on a yellow card. We saw Dom Solanke get sent off earlier on in the season for catching someone after the ball had gone when he was already on a yellow. Sinclair with the turn. Max Low. Oh, it's a terrible turn by Wan Foyth. That might cost us. It hasn't. Nick Pope with a good save. Oh, Max. Not covering himself in glory in today's game, is he? Caught out the back. Both fullbacks, in fact, caught out at the back post for headers in this game. Oh, Tamori wins that header, but it's only gone back as far as Cyprien in there to Pereira. Cyprien, Pereira, is he offside? He's not. Cyprien turns inside. I caught him there as he was having the shot, and he was knocked off balance. If he'd have gone to ground, he might well have found the referee pointing to the spot. As it happens, we take the goal kick and be grateful that we haven't conceded a third. Working this forward quickly and well. And Moise Kent, oh, there's plenty of space now for Lyndon Gooch to break into. Got Nelson with me. Gooch turns nicely. Here's Jamie Ward. Where do we go? I don't know. It's Declan Rice. Don't fancy him to have the shot, but I can't find the pass because I've been tackled. Four to go. Nice little one-two. Sinclair. Foster Zaracho. They've made two changes to their front line in this game. Sinclair and uh, someone else has come on. I noticed that it was a different name. I didn't quite glance which name it was. But it's been their wingers that have kept them in the game and then subsequently might well be winning them the game. Will Hughes with a header at one back post and then Roberto Pereira with one header at the other back post. Rather ironically, both of them shouldn't actually be wingers. Pereira and Will Hughes, both traditionally central midfielders, but they're out wide for this game and they've had the impacts from those wide positions. So clearly the manager was right in putting them where they were. We just weren't competitive in that game. Two shots in the whole 90 minutes. They had seven. I can't really argue with that, can I? Frustrating to go 1-0 up and then be pegged back and then subsequently go behind in such quick fashion. But with the big picture of the game as a whole, I can't deny Watford that victory. That's denied us the opportunity to move into the top four that game. If we'd have won that, we'd have been on 30 points. Yeah, 
I wasn't sure what the two sides at the top were going to be on. I was like, hang on, surely that win, if we'd have won that, that would have put us top. It would have put us third if we'd have won that. We've Burnley next, which we're going to see, and they're 16th. So I would like to think that this should be a pretty straightforward fixture. He says, Burnley at home. Please don't lose two on the bounce. They've just drawn 2-2 two -two with Watford, so they're clearly half decent, Burnley. They've drawn with the side that we've just lost to. Yes, Ed Murphy. A 1-0 lead in the 21st minute. We could yet end today's episode in a European spot. Wolves drawing with Manchester City. Wolves are beating Manchester City. Scenes at the top of the table. As Man United are winning. Moise Ken and Jack Clark have added a second and third. And we are, well, we're certainly going to get the victory. And we are going to get a victory 2-0. Oh, City have pulled it back. Leroy Sané late on. Manchester United going to extend the lead at the top of the table then. And we are in a European spot. United a point clear of Manchester City now. Although, uh, I've just noticed that Arsenal and Liverpool haven't played yet. So we might not be in a European spot by the end of the episode. We'll have a quick trainer, Jamie Ward. I'll advance as far as that next game. Just to see what the... Um, what the league table looks like as we head into it. I might take Harrison Green out of the training draws now and start to train another one of the youngsters. Uh, risk of losing Max Lowe and Jimmy Dunn. I do need to offer some uh, contracts around before we get to January, so don't lose anyone on a free because I can't afford to replace them at the minute. I have no money left. We spent it all in January. Uh, sorry, spent it all in um, the summer. And yes, Arsenal lost, but Chelsea won. So we are out did we? Yeah, they must have won. They're on 28, weren't they? So Chelsea won. We're still in a European spot, but not in the European spots. Uh, or the ones that we would want to be in anyway. Well, not, not that we're that fussed. Oh, hello. Not that we're that fussed about... Um... Go on then, we'll see what you were like. Not that we're that fussed about being in a Europa League spot. We're quite happy to be there, to be completely honest. 65 to 89, 66 to 82. Ooh, maybe Ed Brown. I've been signing a lot of Eds, actually. We've got... Oh, cheers, lads. We've got Ed Murphy in the starting lineup with a minute. I think we've got Ed Phillips. Is it Ed Phillips? Ed Phillips as a left mid. And now we've got another Ed in Ed Brown. All the Eds. 77 to 83. But still, those physicals are improving. And if I can improve those technicals, he's going to be decent. He's going to be decent and usable, probably. Emil Neumann. Technically coming along really nicely. 89 to 94 potential now for him. Billy Hughes, we has been trained and growing well. Cameron Morris, also being trained and growing well. Toby Roberts, also being trained and growing well. Right then, Loic Gerin. Oh, hello. 75 acceleration, 83 strength, 76 jumping, 6 foot tall. That's very intriguing. He could be decent. Jeremy Dufrens, 65 to 89 potential. Dead jumping strength, stamina and reactions. I'm not sure about him. Ed Brown, 5'11", 66 to 92. Mm, I'm not sure about him either. I might, I might release him and Jeremy Dufrens. But uh, Gary looks like he could be pretty decent, especially if we train his sprint speed. Ooh. That's intriguing. Right, I'm going to offer those contracts around between now and the game against... Well, the game against Palace is now, isn't it? So we'll start tomorrow's episode with Crystal Palace. We've also... Ah, we've got an FA Cup game scheduled. Right, it's an eight-game month. I'm glad we have split it into two. Palace away, Arsenal away. We'll sim Bournemouth at home and play the Cup game against Huddersfield Town. Ooh, big episode tomorrow before the January transfer window. I will see you there.